Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10-minute talks that give a high-level overview or an in-depth look at a small portion of a PHP-related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for long-time speakers to test drive new talk ideas. If you'd like to give a 10-minute Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Right now, we have Chris Tankersley. He's going to talk about Zend Expressive in 15 minutes. Please make sure you visit Joined In after the talk and leave Chris some feedback. Thank you, Joe. Uh, like Joe said, I'm going to talk about Zend Expressive, hopefully in 15 minutes. Um, so we'll go over some real high-level stuff uh, with it. Uh, for those that don't know me, I am uh, Chris Tankersley. I've been a PHP programmer for over 11 years, DevOps, sysadmin for about nine. Uh, I have a GitHub page uh, with uh, some more projects that I'm actually doing work on nowadays. Uh, and a couple that I'll talk about in here. Um, I'm also the author of Docker for Developers, uh, which I will actually be speaking on Nomad PHP next month on the 21st. Um, and currently I'm the reigning defending undisputed PHP Magic the Gathering champion of the world. Uh, so if you're interested in magic, we regularly play at many of the conferences. So come by, you might be able to get the belt from me. Uh, but today I'm gonna talk about Zend Expressive. Uh, so what exactly is it? Because there's a lot of frameworks out there now. Uh, and as time goes on, we're getting more and more of them. So Zend Expressive at its heart is a micro framework. Uh, so if you've used Slim or Silex or any of the ones uh, like that that are just kind of like little tiny routing frameworks without a whole lot of frills, uh, that's what Zend Expressive currently is. Uh, it implements the PSR7 standard, which I'll talk a little bit more about here in a bit. But it uh, because of that, it's going to interrupt, it's going to work with many different libraries out there uh, without having to be locked into just a Zen framework library. It is also one of the few micro frameworks that implement a full middleware stack. And I'll go over exactly what middleware and stuff is here in a little bit. But uh, because of the usage of middleware, a lot of the stuff that you'll build for Zen Expressive, one is going to be much more uh, user friendly to other libraries out there and allow you to reuse code outside of Zend Expressive, but also allow you a very simple interface for building new modules for your application. It's also kind of currently the beginning of Zen Framework 3. So if you are looking at Zen Framework 3, Zen Expressive is a really good way to get your foot in the door now, start building applications, and go ahead and migrate them up to kind of a full stack Zen Framework 3 when that becomes completely available. So for the micro framework portion of it, uh, really there's not a whole lot to it. It's mostly just a lightweight wrapper around a bunch of other libraries. One of the big uh, things about Zend Expressive is that it will implement a lot of standards and allow you to pick and choose what libraries you want to be able to use. Uh, it's PSR7 compliant like I talked about, so you can pick a lot of different types of messaging and HTTP messaging interfaces to use with Zend Expressive and to have Zend Expressive integrate with. Uh, it supports multiple different routers. So when you install it, you actually get to choose what router you want to use under underneath it. So it supports right now Aura Router, uh, Fast Route from the League, and of course Zend's MBC router. So you don't have to use Zend if you don't like if you don't want to. If you like Fast Route, which is actually the one that I tend to use on my Zend Expressive uh, projects, go ahead and use it. it. Works great with it. It supports multiple service locators. So if you've used uh, any of the larger modern frameworks, we there's a lot of dependency injection built in. Zend Expressive supports that kind of stuff. Uh, out of the box, it supports Zend Service Manager, uh, which is the one I tend to use because I do a lot of Zend framework applications. Uh, it supports Aura DI out of the box, and it will support a version of Pimple uh, called Pimple Interop, and I'll go over a little bit why that is in a little bit. Uh, but out of the box, you've got three different types of service locators you can use. Again, you don't have to use Zens. And it does support multiple templating systems, even though there's not really a standard for templating systems, but you can choose between Plates, Twig, and Plates, comma, Twig, comma, and Zen Frameworks. Uh, PHP renderer. So you could install Zend Expressive, pick fast route, plates, and uh, pimple, and not use any of the Zend stuff, which is really, really awesome because of the way it works. If you're familiar with how most micro frameworks work, this probably looks fairly similar. Uh, if you want to just use Zend Expressive to build really quick, you know, 
prototypes or uh, things of that nature, this is a fully functional Zend Expressive app. Uh, we pull in vendor auto load because it, it's a composer package, create an instance of our application, throw a route in there with a anonymous function, which looks a lot like stuff in Silex and uh, Slim and other uh, frameworks, return a response, and then we run the application. So if you're used to these micro frameworks, getting into Zend Expressive is really, really easy. Now, it's not just for basic websites, because this kind of setup, especially once you get a lot of routes, is really untenable for long-term maintenance. It's really good for prototyping, but it's not going to last long-term. So out of the box, we have support for full controllers for being able to have fairly complex setups and dependency injection in the actual controllers, uh, full support for dependency injection through the containers, and full support for templating. So if you want to prototype something real quick, you can then turn around, take those anonymous functions, throw them into actual objects, and start using them there, or take an existing object from an existing system, start to port them over. When you use it in this way, it starts to feel kind of between a micro framework and a full stack framework like Zen Framework 2 or Symphony. So like I said, if you are looking at getting into Zen Framework 3 and you're not sure because a lot of the stuff's still being worked on, you can start in Zen Expressive now, move up later, and still get a lot of the functionality that you get with some of the bigger full stack frameworks in the organization that you get. So this is a sample of one of the controllers that we have, and all the controllers are fairly simple. Now, I've omitted the class block around this, uh, but in Zend Expressive, classes don't extend anything else. They are just plain old PHP objects. The only real kind of thing you type hint against is we have uh, response interface and server request interface from PSR7, and those will be pushed into an invoke method on your plain PHP object. So any PHP object that has an invoke method that takes a request and a response and this thing called next, which is any kind of callable, is a valid controller in Zend Expressive. So you can build very simple objects, start to organize your code and get them pushed out. So that kind of leads us into PSR7 because I talked about that a couple different times. So for those that are unfamiliar, PSR7 was a, a PSR that was uh, basically just about HTTP messaging. We build web applications primarily with PHP. So we have to deal a lot with web requests coming in and creating a valid web response going back out. If you've worked with any of the, any of the frameworks out there for a long time, they were very close in how they did things, uh, but method names would be slightly different. So you couldn't just hop between what Zend used and what Symfony used and what uh, Slim used. It got a little bit hard to do all of that. So PSR7 took all that stuff, condensed it down into a, uh, a normalized set of interfaces and makes it so that anything that implements PSR7 can understand how the web request coming in and then what a web request going back out should be. So now we have a lot of packages now that are starting to implement PSR7. So you can easily swap things out uh, because they all understand how a web request should come in and go back out. So in the case of our really basic applications, uh, you just take a request and a response and that are PSR7 and they work. So PSR7, the response has a get body method and that body object that comes back has a write method. We can write stuff to it and return the response. In the case of our uh, more complicated classes that we're, we're actually building objects for. We just take in a request and a response, and uh, it's great out there at the bottom, but we would just return a response. So really your only dependencies are just understand what response co or request comes in and understand what response goes out. That's, that's PSR7. So then the next big thing is gonna be the middleware layer. So middleware uh, is going to be the stuff that interacts with the request and response. And that's a really broad term, but really everything in Zend Expressive is middleware. You're gonna start using middleware for things like authentication, authorization. Uh, I use it to set up my sessions uh, for uh, building models and then pushing them in for checking responses that are going back out. 
really anything that's kind of application level, not kind of business logic, uh, you're going to start putting in generic bits of middleware. Middleware is starting to become a standard. So what you end up with is middleware that can be used inside Zend Expressive and outside. And like I said, and in Zend Expressive, just about every single thing is middleware. So this is a really basic session middleware that I have set. And really to be a, session, uh, a middleware, you just have to be a plain PHP object that implements the invoke magic method. And it's gonna take a request and a response and a, a callable next. And then pretty much you do whatever logic you do. So in this case, we're gonna set uh, an, a session attribute on the request so that way we can actually use sessions. And I'm gonna push a Zen framework session container in here. And then I'm gonna to check to see if there is anything else next in the call chain. If there is, we'll call it, we'll pass the request and the response along. Uh, if you have another next you need to throw in the chain, you could do that too. But we're just invoking whatever callable thing we were pulled in or was passed in. And then once that's all done, we return a response. That's really all there is to it. As long as your object implements invoke, takes a request response and a callable, the next you're all done. So when we get back to looking at our, our controllers, our controllers are actually middleware. Our controllers implement, invoke, and they take a request, a response, and whatever the next thing is in the chain. So in my case, this middleware controller is just going to do whatever logic and return an HTML response. So now this is a lightning talk and getting everything set up is a little bit above and beyond what this talk is gonna go with. Uh, so I have a couple uh, resources available for you that you can take a look. So the first is the actual documentation for Zend Expressive. The documentation is really, really uh, well written for Zend Expressive. If you've used Zend, Zend Framework 2, you've probably run into the whole documentation issue. Not terribly well written, doesn't really work too well trying to implement things. The stuff for Zend Expressive is really, really well written. written. They also have a, a skeleton application that you can download uh, from Git and just install and go. And it will have a fully functional kind of that uh, middle tier, that's middle sized application set up with controllers and the dependency injection and all that stuff. So you can start taking a look at that to move your applications into it. I also have a demo application uh, that I actually uh, built for a PHP architect article. So you can go and see uh, something other than just the skeleton setup uh, and then a link to my session middleware, which I use on a lot of my Zend expressive projects. So uh, with that, uh, I thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter as at Dragon Tank. Uh, and of course, please rate this talk. Let me know uh, how it went, uh, if you have any questions or anything. Um, but other than that, I thank you for watching this and I will throw it back to you, Joe. Thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit Joined In and leave Chris some feedback.